Welcome to U-Wrench. Today we're back working on the Mark V Grand Caravan, also applies to the Chrysler Town and Country. And in today's video we're going to be showing you how to replace one of these. Uh, these are sometimes called uh, exhausters and also quarter panel vents. Now if you found you've got a load of dust on the inside of your car that's suddenly appearing, especially if you do lots of uh, driving on unpaved roads, then this is your most likely candidate. These things can let in a load of dust into the rear of your vehicle when these start to fail. So if you are finding a lot of dust in the rear of the vehicle, this should absolutely be the first thing to check. So what this unit basically does is to equalize the uh, pressure in the cabin. So when you slam a door on a car, you get a load of air that's quickly uh, pulled into the car, and these things allow the uh, air to equalize. So these are dead simple, it's just a series of little flaps. So when that air gets pushed into the vehicle, the air can escape through the flaps, but in theory, dirt can't come in the other way. But what tends to happen, because these are just kind of little foam rubber flaps, these tend to deteriorate uh, over time and of course these will just completely fall off and you've got open holes and that's just going to allow all of that dust and all of that dirt, especially if you're driving on unpaved roads, to come straight through into the rear of the car. And on lots of makes and models, they actually make these uh, flaps out of uh, plastic so they last for many, many years. However, on our uh, Dodge and Chrysler models here, they make them out of this kind of foam rubber, which tends to deteriorate quite quickly. On the flip side of that, thankfully these are quite inexpensive. Uh, we picked these up from the uh, Chrysler main dealer and they cost us about $16, uh, $17 Canadian each, which is what about $13 US. And these are available to buy on Amazon, but they're probably a little bit more expensive on Amazon than they are, believe it or not, from the main dealer. But if you don't have a main dealer near you, then uh, ordering from Amazon may well be an option. So we'll add that link for you into the video description. And as you'll see as we progress through the video, we're going to replace these on both sides because obviously if it's uh, rotten on uh, one side, it's going to be equally as rotten on the other side. So we're going to show you both sides. And as you'll see, one side is a lot easier than the other. But don't worry, we will be showing you both. In this video, we're going to show you absolutely by far the easiest way to replace these. There's absolutely no need to remove your rear bumper to get these fitted. And likewise, you don't have to start removing your uh, entire uh, trim panels. These are dead easy to do if you know how. And that's what we'll show you. So we've got some work to do. Let's crack on. So we're going to start first of all with the easy side. And that is on the left hand side of the uh, vehicle. And uh, this is the uh, panel here uh, that contains your jack. So let's get this uh, panel out of the way. It's got these two little uh, kind of brown discs. Turn them so they're both facing upward. Give it a bit of a pull there at the top. And just lift out the other uh, little tabs at the bottom there. So we've now got our uh, jack in here. So let's get this out of the way so we can see what we're doing. And inside your uh, compartment here, you've probably got this, uh, this bit of carpet here. Uh, it sits across the back. Just kind of pull that down and get that out of the way. As you can see, we do have a little bit of the, uh, the dust still uh, kicking around here. When we first uh, opened this up, uh, before we have cleaned it now, there was literally a good quarter of an inch, just solid, uh, full of dust in there. But we have vacuumed it out. But it is amazing how much dust can actually get into these cars through those exhaust panels. So let's have a look at the condition of the old exhaust uh, vent panel first. We've got this, uh, this like foam insert here. Just fold that inwards. We can get that out of the way. And what we can see uh, through the hole there, as you can see, the uh, top corner uh, of our vent panel here. And what we should be seeing is these uh, these little uh, flaps, uh, but it looks like most of those are missing. And as you can see, it appears that all of our panels have uh, rotted away and fallen off, uh, apart from that uh, one we've still got at the top there. And now this particular car is uh, nine years old, so it goes to show that the life expectancy on these panels is probably a maximum of around five years. Now what holds these panels in, we've actually got these uh, little kind of compression clips. Uh, two on the uh, top there and two on the bottom. There's uh, none on the sides. And that's what you can see uh, just at the top there. Now to get these uh, vent panels removed, a lot of people actually end up removing the uh, entire rear bumper, which of course is a lot of extra work. It is actually possible to access these by reaching uh, upwards uh, up in under the uh, rear bumper from underneath. So that's the method that we're going to use. Okay, so the panel is located approximately here. So what you can do, there's a bit of a gap there. You kind of turn your hand inwards and reach up. You should be able to uh, feel the uh, panel. So my hand is just around there. So you, you don't have to look, reach up very far. Just a little way up and you should be able to feel the panel just there. Uh, 
so here's the old uh, uh, panel uh, right here and I managed to uh, get this uh, removed um, from uh, underneath just by reaching up and kind of forcing the uh, frame up a little bit, putting a little bit of a bend on the frame just to get the, uh, the bottom ones out. And then once the, the bottom uh, prongs were out, if you just continue to kind of push it a little bit, you can kind of get that angle and it just pops out. So hopefully we're going to be able to replace uh, both of these uh, from underneath uh, without having to remove uh, the uh, trim panel on the opposite side. That's where the job becomes more complicated. On the side that we're working on right here, we've got that nice uh, access panel where the jack goes and we can see this. On the other side, there's no access panel, but hopefully we can get them both replaced uh, without having to remove any trim panels at all. So for the new panel, you need to obviously make sure that you've got the correct orientation. It says top, obviously these uh, little flaps uh, should be um, uh, going down with gravity. You don't want to be fitting it up this way because the flaps will be wide open. You see how badly made these are from the factory. These uh, flaps don't even close uh, 100%, but they are cheap and cheerful. So making sure we've got the uh, the top definitely at the top. I'm going to push this panel uh, up through the gap here. Feel where that hole is there and then we're ready to try and put that in place. There we have it, that's the, uh, the vent panel uh, safely in place. And what you want to make sure is when you're uh, putting it in, that you put it in squarely to the hole. And remember you've got the two tabs at the bottom and two tabs obviously at the top as well. And you want to make sure that you uh, get all four of those clicked in. On this side, it's quite easy because you can obviously, we can see the, uh, the two on the top, but we can't uh, see the uh, two on the bottom. You can put a mirror tool down there if you wanted to. But as long as you kind of feel them click into place, if you give it a bit of a push from the inside, it should be solid on all four corners, which that is. So I'm happy that that one's definitely fitted correctly. So next we need to look at the right hand side of the vehicle. As I mentioned before, uh, this side is much harder than the other side. Our uh, panel is uh, located uh, in the same kind of location, tucked in behind there. But unlike the other side where we have that nice lift out panel uh, for where the jack goes, uh, we have no access at all. None of this comes apart. So your traditional options are either to uh, remove the rear bumper, which as I said creates a lot of extra work, or to start undoing this panel so you can reach in behind this panel and try and access the vent that way. However, as I showed on the opposite side, it is possible to get these removed and refitted uh, by coming up underneath the other uh, rear bumper there uh, without having to do either of those. So hopefully we can do that on this side as well. Okay, so remembering our panels approximately in this kind of area here. Uh, again, we're going to reach up underneath. I found it's uh, easier, on the other side at least, you kind of turn your hand in, kind of almost so it's come the wrong way around. And you can kind of work from that direction. If you put it up in this direction, so there's not enough uh, space behind there to kind of turn your hand around. So you want to kind of snake it up in that direction. When I come up, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to attack the, uh, the bottom of the panel first. I'm going to try and flex that frame to allow me to uh, get the two clips out. And once the two clips uh, are out, you'll find it still won't kind of come out of the hole because it's kind of uh, quite deep. So again, if you flex the uh, frame a little bit more just to get the bottom of the, uh, the edge of that frame uh, out when it's on the angle, and then uh, once that's out, obviously the top part will just fall out. So let's give it a try. As we can see, very, very similar condition to the, uh, <laughs> to the other side. Uh, this one had uh, two flaps uh, holding on for dear life. So it's now time to put the uh, new panel in. Remember, you want the, uh, the top uh, facing you and obviously these uh, flaps uh, should be facing outwards. So that's exactly how I want to put it back in.
Just feeling for the hole first of all. Then you want to make sure that when you're putting it into the hole, you want to get it nice and uh, even on both uh, both sides. You don't want to be pushing it at an angle. Try and get it nice and flat in relation to that hole. And then I'm going to try and get these uh, little clips. Once I'm happy at this level, snapped in. Perfect. So they all uh, seem like they clipped in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grab, lost them uh, up there. Uh, I'm just going to kind of grab the uh, grab the frame a little bit, and I'm going to pull the uh, the frame uh, just to make sure that it definitely feels like it's locked in there. Yeah, that feels good on all four corners. Feels like it's in there, nice and solid so that's perfect now one of the things that uh, makes it quite easy when you uh, reach up under and you put this in and you've uh, snapped it in place it's actually got this uh, plastic frame around the outside so when you reach up under that bump you can actually grab the frame and give it a little bit of a pull just to make sure that that tabs in correctly likewise here make sure that was incorrectly come up here so you can check all four with this uh, frame it's worth noting that the uh, original ones the older ones uh, don't have that kind of plastic uh, surround frame on them so that's definitely a design uh, improvement because that's going to give you something that you can reach up and just make sure that it's definitely seated correctly. So as you can see, it's not such a big job to get these replaced. You don't need to remove your bumper. You don't need to start stripping down the inside of your car. They can be done dead easily. Now, as I mentioned before, these probably need to be replaced probably every uh, five years uh, maximum. So thankfully, you can kind of do it in kind of five to ten minutes aside. If this video has been helpful for you, can you please consider helping to support us in return by hitting the super thanks option underneath the video. And likewise, before you leave us, can you take one second out of your busy schedule just to be sure to hit that like button for us. It really does help us out. If you want to see loads more Grand Caravan content, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.